365 cut. These are the meaningless ramblings of a Scottish redone whore and a pissy ex-video store clerk. Their ongoing mission is to set right the movie wrongs. They're gonna need a bigger podcast. And this is episode... Um, 1619. 1619. Yes, this is episode 1619. So hello, Chris. Hello, Kev. Hi. We are here with uh, with Scarlett because the ratings always seem to soar when we have one of the girls on. It's been a while since you were on the, on the show, wasn't it, Scarlett? Yes. Remember the last time? Yes. What, was the, what, what did you review last time? Uh, Secret Life of Pets. Secret Life of Pets. That's where we got the uh, the catchphrase that is Scarlet Halden, takeaway square. <laughs> <laughs> and why are you here tonight? What 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 is this episode going to be about? I don't know, Dad. I know because I didn't tell you. <laughs> well, si- since the last time you were on, we split the show into two, so we do a show called Indie Talk. Can you can you say Indie Talk to the people? Indie Talk. That, that means we talk about Indiana Jones. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. doesn't. (laughs) You don't know when Diana Jones is. No. No. So, would you like to tell the people where they can find us, Scarlett? In Chris's house. What? What? Right now in Chris's house, but where can they find us on the interwebs? Mm, I don't know. Facebook? Facebook. Facebook. And Twitter? Twitter. Oh, oh, what about if you... well, if you go on Google and type in, you know, three, five, flicks, podcast. That'll do. That will get you there. That'll get you that there. will get you there. <laughs> That'll get you to our website, because we have a website. We have a website page on the Googles. Do you use Google? I don't know if you do use Google, do you? I do. When? What do you do Google for? To watch films. What films? Like kids films. What kids films? <laughs> Harry Potter ones. Harry Potter. Ugh. 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 Harry Potter's good. We like Harry Potter. Yeah. Can people find us on iTunes, do you think? Yeah. Yeah? What about other third party podcast apps? I <laughs> don't know about that. You don't know about that? Are we not that good? Mm, yeah, good. We are good. Yeah. Thank you very much. That is a glowing, glowing review there. <laughs> You've not listened to it yet, though, because your dad swears quite a lot. So. Yeah. Yes. I do say a lot of swear words that begin. I have heard one of them and you swear. Which what? Which one? What word did I say? I bet you can't remember. <laughs> 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 but yes, this is Three Six Five Flicks Podcast. That is my daughter Scarlett who is joining us for the intro. Hello. <laughs> and tonight is an indie talk, and I'm gonna let Chris tell you about this one because this was his baby. It was. Thank you. <laughs> as, as she turns the mic <laughs> Professional uh, Yeah, so this indie talk is uh, As Scarlett said, episode 69 see. Mm-hmm. Can we say it? What? 69, dude I thought you were going to say sexy talk time But my daughter's here, so no, calm down never, never. <laughs> Sexy talk <laughs> we can't. So this episode <laughs> Lindsay won't be, we, we can't let Lindsay listen to this one <laughs> She won't listen anyway to me No, she doesn't, she doesn't. This episode, we are joined by a director called Dave Hastings, who yes. I started speaking to through the Facebooks. Uh, Dave is about, or he's just he's just finished filming a movie called Sustain. So I Excellent. watched the trailer, uh, which is on their website, uh, which Dave will, Dave will tell us about in a minute. He does. And so I asked Dave to come on, tell us about Sustain, because mm-hmm. I thought the, the teaser trailer that they brought out looked very, very good. You did, you liked it. Yeah. Very moody and very, very, very eyeball and mm-hmm. stuff. Yep. <laughs> and that's about it. And that's about it. But yeah. he, he did give us some juicy, juicy stories. Yes, he did. Yeah, he told us. It was a, I enjoyed speaking to him. Yeah, it was. It was a very, stories. This is great. having a, This is almost like having a live studio audience. Because she's just going to laugh her head off at anything yeah. we say. But we uh, we will be playing the interview shortly. But today, which is this episode, will be coming out on Friday. Because mm-hmm. today is what day? 
So yeah, this episode will be coming out on Friday. Where will we be today when the people are listening to this? Where will we'll, we be, Chris? We'll be in Wales. Wales. Wales, don't you know? Wales. And you took me to work. No. <gasps> Let me tell you for why. Hi. Well done, getting involved. We are going to be at Sci-Fi Weekender. I'm sure we've told you this on the last two or three episodes. Because you might be sick. Shut up. So yes, we are going to be at Sci-Fi Weekender in Wales, in Fwelly. And we are going to be taking taking in some convention-y sites. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not really a convention. It's like a... It's a- it's a four-day rave. Yeah. Yeah, basically. Don't with, say rave, I'll not go. <laughs> with, yeah. with, with films and cosplaying and, and TV shows and all sorts. It's kind of like just a big geek festival, really, isn't it? It is. I'm, it is. I'm really looking forward to it. The biggest geek festival in the UK, as it says there on the go. website. There you go. And we, uh, we have received our pack today, so we are all set and ready to go. Just need to find out who we're rooming with now. Yeah. Yeah, which will be strange. Good though. That will be strange. That'll Good be though. Well, if it's someone from Wales. Well, we'll not understand them. We'll just talk about Gavin and Stacey. Well, we'll talk about Gavin and Stacey all day. We'll be like, I'm from Wales. And we'll say, oh, and do you? No, I don't. Do you? <laughs> no, I don't. Hey, do you? No, I don't. Do you? No, I don't. <laughs> shut, shut up and some of, some of the people that are going to be there uh, Nicholas Brendan from uh, Buffy fame uh, Buffy Zan fame. yes Buffy fame I'm very excited about that I know you are I'm just going to turn into a blubbering idiot though. I not wait then nah and he is there to to talk about Buffy <clears throat> uh, and his panels and stuff but he's also going to be there to promote a movie that is being premiered at the festival mm-hmm. from Buffy from our our good pal Tom Patton, who's been on the show before, also starring Mike Beckham, who's been on the show before. Exactly. So I'm sure we might take a. I'm hoping we're going to get to go for a cheeky pint with them. We'll and, take some you cheeky know. time, and I'm I'm imagining it will be a cheeky pint that turns into a cheeky few pints. <laughs> Not wrong with that. I'm hoping so. Oh, yeah. And also no, we have uh, Pat Pat Sharp is going to be de- yeah. DJing for us. We cannot DJing. wait to see Pat Sharp. Ace Rimmer himself, Chris Barry, is going to be there as well. And hopefully, <laughs> hopefully by this point we've already shaken hands and hobnob with all of them. Yes. Oh, yes. Hobnob. Oh, hobnob. You're not trying well, to. Ma- just turning the heckle in now. To be honest, you're not. You're not making catchphrases for us. So if you if you are there when this episode comes out, if you're in Wales, if you're in Thwelly, if you're at Sci-Fi Weekend, come and find us, and we will have you on the show because that's what we're going for. So, yes. But for now, let's get on with the episode. It is Dave Hastings, am I right? Dave Hastings, yeah. talking about Sustain. Talking about Sustain. And also, uh, an actor from the movie, whose, whose name is Joshua, and yes. I've gone completely blank and I can't remember his surname. Joshua. Joshua. Yeah, well, the young, a young, bright, uh, shining star of this movie, Joshua, who... Like, it's, his first, it's his first acting role. He's, it's his first he's acting role. At, uh, he's currently at acting school, or from school. Um... So he he was a little bit nervous, bless him, about coming. This was, this was his first podcast. That's that's no excuse to be choosing Greece, though. Oh, Greece. And and listen, listen out, listen out for the three six five pick at the end. Yeah. And we'll bless be him. we'll be back after this interview in progress. Ba, ba, ba. I used to be fine. Content even. But that all changed. The night he killed my little brother. Nobody should be scared of me. Unless you cross me. There are five stages of grief we all go through, but it's how you come out of them that determines what type of person you really are, and what lengths you'll go to to get justice.
Yeah, we'll 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 just generally easy in, and it'll yeah. be great. Okay. <laughs> right, move on there before he makes any inappropriate jokes. <laughs> Hello, we are back with another em- episode of Indie Talk. Yeah. And tonight we are joined by two guests, Kev. Two, oh, two God, guests. Two. We are joined by director and writer Dave Hastings and also an up-and-coming actor, mm-hmm. Joshua Sewell. Nice one. How are you doing, guys? Yeah, fine. We're fine. Fine, fine, thank fine you. thanks. Oh god, that sounds that sounds great. <laughs> we're on the Midlands. We're, we're always yeah. like this. we're on the Midlands. We'll, we'll start again. We'll start again. How are you tonight, guys? You will be fine. Very good. Yeah, very that, good. that was pretty much the same. That, that, that was the same take we're again. From, we're from the Midlands, guys. We have this. We have we like this old while. Yeah, that's fine. That's, that's fine. all right. In the middle. <laughs> I, I've got I've got a friend from down that way who very much sounds like that all the time. So that's that's fine. <laughs> we thought Gordon and Beric was bleak. <laughs> uh, so you can understand what we're saying because most people don't these days. So, well, I do have the um, the Skype translator on, so we'll we'll get, ah, we'll get by. We'll get by. <laughs> well, uh, we've done it. We've done a few episodes with uh, guys in LA and all that kind of thing, and we do get every now and then, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's uh, it's, it's uh, better speaking to uh, to guys like yourself from Britain. You can't say oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody likes the British, it's fine. Okay, so on tonight's indie talk, we are talking about a, a movie that's coming very soon. The movie is called Sustain. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, guys, let's talk about Sustain. So, first up, first up, then, uh, Dave, you're, you're the director and co writer, so uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about where, first up, where they can find the trailer for, the, for Sustain because it looks damn good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, you can go through the social media stuff, really. I mean, if you go to Facebook, it's forward slash sustain movie. Um, and the trailer's on there. There's also some... Um, we always like to do, like, minisodes. Yeah. Um, which kind of get people used to some of the characters that you're going to see. And obviously, Joshua is in one of those. Um, some of them are set before the film takes place. Some of them are set afterwards. It's just so you kind of get an idea of some of the characters that you're going to be seeing. And, and it gives you a bit of an insight into some of the bad guys and the good guys and, and everybody else in between and stuff. So it's forward slash sustain movie on Facebook really and all the, everything's there and you can find the website there and if you're a Twitter person you can find the Twitter account there as well. Oh we, we don't we don't pimp Twitter on this show. No we don't <laughs> we don't like we don't like Twitter. I retract that but, <laughs> but but on that then um, the mm. when we've been talking to in, independent directors and filmmakers and stuff like that we we're starting to realise that social media is is a really important aspect of this whole thing right now. So it's kind of yeah. like you guys are killing it on your Facebook. You're doing a really good job with that. I like the videos you're putting out there, uh, especially what was it the the train one when they're all going past oh, the window. Yeah, uh, yeah that was, um, you're doing a great yeah. job, kind of putting that out there. So I just want to give you a little little bit of a props on that one. Thank you. Cheers. Um, yeah, so that's so that's the trailer. So that's the trailer. So um, without giving anything major away, then can you tell can you tell the listeners a little bit about what sustain is about? Um, it's about um, two brothers from, um, from Emily and the half brothers, and one of them, which who is sitting right next to me, is murdered in a racial attack, and it's about the repercussions of that event. So not just on the um, the family members, which is obviously the brothers left behind, which is played by Brett, who also co-wrote the film, but also the mom, who he has a fractured relationship with already. Um, so you've got the flanks, which is the family that are left behind. You've also got the community because this is kind of a, a really horrible crime and it affects the community and the people within the community as well. And and also the bad guys, how how does it affect them? Which mm. I thought was interesting as well. So that's pretty much it. And you've got all these little subplots going on and obviously the brother goes through, you know, the channels, the book channels with the police and obviously nothing seems to come from that. So eventually he kind of starts to go after the people who took his brother basically. That sounds great. That really does. We we do love a good revenge. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a very um very British way, I guess. Um I mean if you watch things like Get Carter and stuff, that was very much um in in our minds when we were kind of thinking of the idea and writing scenes down and and, and obviously Harry Brown as well, both of which you've got Michael Caine in them. Mm, yeah. Love Harry Brown. Yeah. So it's very much along those lines in terms of visually as well. Um, you know, we've been taking a few 
kind of hints from that as well in terms of color schemes and um um, we're very interested in desaturating the look of the film, so it's actually not that colourful. Um, right. Is, uh, we, we, I'm quite interested in as a director is just taking the colour out of it and just giving it a very British film look. Um, so do you think that adds towards the, sort of the atmosphere of the film then? Yeah, yeah, because it's it's um, whenever you watch British films, they're very grim. I always find, and, mm-hmm. and that's a, that's a unique selling point on them. I love British films and they're like that. Cause it just seems very more real, but very, very, uh, very Shane Meadows like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, he likes to take all the color out of everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah pretty much. It's got a bit of color in it, but. <laughs> so, so this is um, Dave. Th- this is a bit of a, a slightly different type of movie for you that you've written and directed in the past. What is it about this type of story that really sort of gets the juices going to to write and to direct and just to get it out there? Um, I, I do. I like doing different things, really, as a director. I mean, I, my guilty pleasure is horror, and it always will be. And I grew up on horror and stuff, yeah. so I say like, guilty pleasure. And and um, but I do love dramas as well. I love um, Jimmy McGovern. He's one of my favourite writers. Um, and he did a series called The Street on the B- on BBC, which I I absolutely adore. Yeah. And, um, and not that kind of interaction, just just everyday life and how people can be affected by the smallest of things or the biggest of events. And just seeing that drama unfold is very interesting to me. So, so yeah, that was it really. I just thought, and I like to change stuff every time and do something different with directing and writing. Really, yeah. Spread my wings a little bit. <laughs> um, yes, I mean, given you know, you explained what the the subject of the movie was and what have you. So, this is the, I mean, this is for both of you guys. I mean, how how important do you feel? It is to tell a story like that with the world how it is at the moment. Yeah. You want to take this one, Josh? Uh, <laughs> He's a bit shy. <laughs> Do you well, want to take this one? Uh, okay, yeah. Go on, um, <laughs> well, I think it's important because uh, there's a lot of... The justice system in the world right now is not really up to standards, up, I think. And to tell a story like this, uh, it kind of pulls people back into the, like, oh, I, need, I want to get justice for this, I want to get just, justice for that. Like, it makes them fight for what they really want. Like, Brett, um, uh, Toby's brother, um, he wants to get justice for his little brother, and he's fighting so hard, and he's not just, he's not letting the justice system bring him down, he's just trying to get justice for his brother. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and like I say, we've had political everything is at the moment, and obviously certain events going on around the world and stuff. I think this is a unique opportunity to kind of highlight the issues and and um, and how communities respond to stuff and, and just all kinds of stuff, really, in that respect. Like, the themes are quite... Um, they've been highlighted a lot. Yeah. Best recently. And I think, you know, that it's good to tell a story like this because it shows actually there are good people in the world still, regardless of whatever background you come from. It, it does feel like quite, quite a... A, a prominent, important story to be telling right now because it is is it's, it's it's horrible time. Well, it's not horrible times, but it's quite bleak times right now. So, yeah. I yeah. mean, to, for you guys to to come out and and to make this movie and to put it out there the way you are, it's you know, it's it's got to be difficult and daunting. So it's kind of like Josh. Uh, am I am I correct in saying that this is your your first sort of movie that you've done? Yeah, it's my first movie. I mean, um, I was on. Uh, the B- B- uh, BBC One Doctors when I was in year six, but yeah, this is the first actual movie I've done. So, it's a really good experience, yeah. So with the um, with the subject matter in mind and how important this type of movie is, how daunting is that for you to to come into this as your first sort of proper role? You know what I mean? I wouldn't say it's so much daunting. I would say it's more exciting than daunting yeah. because it's always something that I've wanted to do from a very young age. I've always wanted to act. I've always wanted to be in front of a camera acting just what it's always something i want to do so i would say it was more of an exciting feeling than daunting i'm really looking forward to it and we're having re- so much fun with this like it's really something that it's really given me experience on on screen oh i imagine i imagine <laughs> <laughs> so, so with that in mind what if if anything because uh, we don't want to give too much away but what can you tell us about your character in particular i think my character's a very introvert, introverted person when it comes to like interacting with other people, like um, Kieran's friends and his. Even though you don't really see, talk to his mom. 
uh, he's really introverted. But when it comes to like Brett, he's very outgoing and he's yeah. more talkative. Like I think Brett brings out the best in him because he's Brett. Like he always um, looks over him and makes sure he's okay. And I think he's just a very introverted person. Really, he's really mysterious. And don't know what he's thinking. He's kind of hides his thoughts and his feelings. But when he's around Brett, he seems really comfortable and outgoing. Thanks. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 really sounding like an, an interesting premise, and what really struck me there uh, when you were telling us about the plot and what have you, Dave, is you know that you're you're telling us about the villains or or you know the thug characters as well, which yeah. you don't often get. A lot of the, a lot of these very, stories, very... a lot of these stories, you get that you know the thug characters are kind of two dimensional, cartoony type characters. Yeah. So. Yeah. What uh, you, uh, when you were writing these characters, how did you go about still making sure that they were still three dimensional characters? Um, you 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 do get to kind of see what makes them tick. I mean, I'm I'm a big fan of not revealing too much about a character. Yeah. I find that more mysterious. But at the same time, I wanted to, uh, it's all about ripples. This film is in a sense this this horrible act that they do sends ripples for everybody. And what I was interested in is how these three guys react to what they've done yeah um you know and it and, and that allows you to play with quite a lot of different personalities and and um, quite a lot of themes and so forth um so they all react to it very very differently i mean one of them i mean obviously kevin the main guy who's played fantastically by richard book is just sinister as hell um he's just psychotic and he, he brought that to life immediately um he's just kind of absolutely crazy um, you've got his younger brother who's played by Matt Kinson who plays Roy in the film, Roy McKenzie. Now, he's under the shadow of his brother and he has a lot of kind of affection for his brother and stuff. Um, and even though he partakes in the bad stuff, it does affect him quite differently because um, he's never seen people go that far. And then also you've got Chad who's played by um, Jay Podmore who's kind of their friend and he's kind of like, you know, the one who hangs around them and stuff and they kind of trust him enough to kind of be part of this little group that they've got. Um so they're all very different kind of villains in a way, and, and that all reflects how they interact with um, Brett's character Rachel in the film. Um, but it was very interesting to to kind of bring them to life in that respect and just show their reaction to what they've done, um, whether that be, you know, if they are remorseful for it or if they really don't have any remorse whatsoever. You know, obviously you'll have to watch the film to find out. In yeah. That <laughs> But um, it's very interesting how we've been able to play around with the three of them and their reactions to it. And they've, they've all three of them have been absolutely amazing. I mean, obviously, with like going back to the themes and how difficult it is to yeah. film stuff, you know, it, it was it was chilling to have to watch some of the stuff we did a few weeks ago where we did the murder scene with Josh here. Um, but at the same time, all of these guys were just amazing with it. Um, I mean, it was quite chilling in the sense that our production designer, she was on set with us, and while we were filming it, she went, I can't watch this, it's too, it looks too real. Wow. And she had to go away for about half an hour and just come back when we'd kind of gone for a break and stuff because she was like, this is far too real. This is These guys are just... <laughs> these guys are just nailing it. Bloody hell. So when you were writing it then, did, did or, or when you and Brett were writing it, did you ever have moments where you were going, where you thought, oh, Shit, I need a beer. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's quite a few times. To yeah. <laughs> um, I yeah. I mean, there are scenes that. I mean, when we wrote the murder scene, for instance, I purposely made it quite violent because mm. you have to, you have to kind of that's that has to be an impact. That has to be very impactful. That scene does because that's what the whole rest of the film hinges on. Yeah. So if it's not impact. It doesn't affect the audience that much. Um, then it's you know the rest of the film's not going to work. Um, what was interesting from a director's point of view was I'm, I'm with that scene I'm very much interested in keeping to the wide shots mm. which is um, because we were doing we did the wide shot in two takes and stuff and watching it from afar sometimes is actually a lot more devastating and horrifying to watch than being quite close into it because you could be the person who's watching it could be yeah. there you know walk on yeah. the dog yeah. or whatever and see that happen in the, in the background yeah. kind of thing yeah, and obviously when we have the sound effects in when we're in post production as well, that will make it even more intense and you know difficult to watch. Mm. So I was quite interested in the, that kind of um, approach 
to showing it. And obviously, once we're in the edit, that might change. But from when I was on the set and stuff, in my head, I was thinking about the void a lot and just going back to that every now and again, almost like you're taking a step back and, like you say, being a spectator, which is quite a horrifying thing to think about as well, in a sense. So. Yeah. Yeah, you've kind of t- taken us back a little bit now. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of, um, with you saying that, it puts me in mind of um, a, fr- a French movie that came out a few years back, that Ir- Irreversible. Yeah, I know, um, yeah. The the, yeah. S- the scene in the um, the tunnel is, like you say, wide shot. It's it's horrific yeah. to watch, so... Yes, I've, it I've, is. I, yeah, I definitely had that in mind when I was thinking about it as well. Because I remember, I think I've only ever seen it once, and I think I've said I'd never watch it again, just because of that scene, really. Oh, it's, 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 it's horrific. It's, I've never seen that. I keep telling, I keep telling you to watch it, but <laughs> yeah. And the worst thing is, halfway through, somebody walks into the background and walks yeah. out. Yeah. Oh man. I think they said they digitally added that person in. You would I'm hope not... so. <laughs> uh, they digitally added somebody walked in the background and walk out because they said, "Oh, we, well, we can make it a bit more horrifying and add somebody in." So oh. Was... oh, that's just. It's it's a <laughs> it's a great movie, but that scene is just horrific. Yeah. It's absolutely yeah. horrific. Yeah. It... Yeah, I think I've only, like I said, I've only watched it once just because I just went. I don't need to watch this again. <laughs> I, I remember I, I kept hearing a lot of things when it was when it was coming to the UK. I kept hearing about it. and I was like, well, I'm kind of, I'm one of those people like I, I like to try and see everything sort of thing. And and I'd heard so much. I was like, I need to go and see this. And it literally, <laughs> it played in like three cinemas in the UK, and it was pulled within the first screen. Wow, yeah. so was it a murder? Oh no, 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 oh, no, no, no. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We'll save that for another episode. <laughs> <laughs> so, so from what I've from what I've read and watching the trailer as well, looks as though the, the movie's going to force the audience to really take Kieran's journey right the way throughout. How how conscious of this is like as a, a viewer, us watching it? How conscious of that where we had to feel Kieran's sort of pain? Um. Well, I mean, it's it's important because um, he's the central character in a sense, and you have to go for it. His frustrations at the legal system, yeah, it's the it's the the first half of the film, and then obviously that switches halfway through, and then you go through the frustrations of trying to do it himself, but not in a way that it's a grey area, really. Like, do you, how far will you go to get justice in that respect? Um, you know, what what will you do to get it? And obviously, the character of Farah Marshall, who's played by Laura Evanson, that's where she comes into it. And she's a, she's a local reporter, and she's had dealings with these guys as well, the McKenzie brothers and everything. So there's, you know, it's again, it's that coming together of people who've had um, mm. problems with these three guys before. But like most of the film we've shown through, I mean, obviously at the beginning of the film, we really spend a lot of time with Joshua here and, and his brother Kieran, his five like Brett, just to, you have to establish that brother relationship that they've got, and it's really cool. There's, the scenes these guys have been doing is really nice. Which then makes it really hard then that we've had to do all these other things after <laughs> because it's kind of like you're just ripping this family apart. And um, but then hopefully you know that comes through on screen and, and you know we really want to we have to play on that brother relationship because that's what feeds the rest of the film as well. If you don't believe in that relationship, then you know Kieran's journey after that doesn't work as much as it. Yeah. As it should. But that that's so. that's a sign of, of of a good British film. To be fair. Just, just yeah. making us feel happy and then tearing us apart. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, like any grim British film. Exactly. Yeah. Give them, a, give them a false <laughs> sense and then just destroy them. I wouldn't even say grim British film. I would just say any British film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Well, well what ship down does it from the beginning? So. Oh God, what ship down? Yeah. <laughs> I've not seen that in a that. long, 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 long time. Yeah, you sucked into that whole depression from the first yeah. day. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, you you spoke Dave there about the. You know some of the grim stuff that you're doing uh, yeah. when, you know, when you're doing when you're making the movie, but there's a lot of you know as we said before there's a lot of update videos on the on the uh, Facebook page and what have you. So you know, given the fact that you're filming all of these grim grim scenes, how important is it to also have you know sort of maintain that positive you know sort of fun atmosphere that that, that we've seen in the videos there. It's basically because all these guys are comedians, pretty much. Right. <laughs> Every time we've cut and stuff, you can just they carry on and just have a laugh or a joke and stuff and and do a funny kind of look to camera or something. It's just all kinds of stuff, really. And, and you have to have that kind of um, atmosphere on set because it just it, it releases that tension from a scene yeah. quite quickly and everybody just remembers, like, okay, you know, we're making a film here, it's fine, we're okay. Um, 
you, you've had some laughs with the guys because yeah. obviously you've had some run-ins with. So when we did the pub scene a few weeks ago, it was supposed to be New Year's Eve, um, and obviously these three guys have kind of cornered Toby and stuff. But then obviously after that, you were all joking and laughing yeah. and <laughs> having us having you know like pictures of them just pretending to strangle you and all kinds of stuff really, <laughs> which you know which is great to see. And and um, what about you, Jumpy One? I mean, obviously, with that scene of a week we were filming, which was like your kind of big scene in a sense, there was a lot of jokes on set, considering yeah. <laughs> a lot of funny pictures, a lot of funny videos. Yeah, it's a lot of funny videos and a lot of funny pictures because everybody's just putting voices on and <laughs> making jokes and stuff, and and it's it's a lovely atmosphere to be. In, obviously, obviously, it's not when you're filming the scenes, but it's yeah. Um, <laughs> but, see, but see. as soon as you say cut, it's just you know we all we all know each other, we all know what what kind of laughs we have and stuff, and. And it's it's essential really to any film set just to have a laugh. I think uh, I think personally for me, if I was in Joshua's shoes, I wouldn't be having a pint with them. Like <laughs> when, when, yeah. they, when, when they say when they say cut and they're like, "Do you fancy going for a pint?" I'd be like, "No." <laughs> well, there was plenty of drink afterwards, and I saw you lot all drinking in the corner. To be fair, so, so they were all right afterwards. It was just a slight scuffle. <laughs> just, a, just a slight. <laughs> yeah, it is, a, it is a flesh wound, as Monty Python would say. <laughs> no man, that, that sounds great. Like it, it is so often that things like that. I think you do have to break the tension, so it's great to hear. Yeah, it must have occurred to you, to, to you once, though, Josh, just to go. Yeah, it was funny, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, you were. If I remember right, you. You were sitting in the toilet cubicle. Yeah, I was sitting in there for how long? How long was I sitting there? Twenty-five minutes. Twenty-five minutes. Just... And we were in this scene with the guys, and they were outside the toilet cubicle. And at one point, somebody went, "Is Josh in the toilet cubicle yeah. still?" <laughs> and we went, "Oh crap, yeah, he is." <laughs> Josh, <laughs> and then we just heard your voice going, "Yeah, I'm yeah. fine, guys." <laughs> 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 forgot them because these guys they forgot, they forgot about me they forgot about me and I was but, in but you were you know you were in a good place you were on the bog so <laughs> nothing <laughs> nothing bad ever happened on the toilet so that was locked so he was alright <laughs> so yeah uh, Sustain has an ongoing Indiegogo page doesn't it um, it has I mean we haven't I mean we, we pretty much closed it once we we got what we what we could use and stuff out of it and we've brought equipment with it and we've had so much kind of help off Loads of, um, I mean, the council have been fantastic with us, um, and that's a relationship that we built up since um, since last film screening, definitely. Been. And um, Sophia French, who works at the council, is very supportive of us and helps us with, you know, obviously telling the police that we were filming this murder scene a few weeks ago in Darlston. <laughs> um, you know, and she's she's so supportive of us, and and they're really really kind of just happy that we're doing stuff around the region. Now that's um, interesting. Yeah. That is interesting because we, as Kev said before. We've spoken to a lot of uh, you know British filmmakers like yourselves lately, and one thing that we've picked up, yeah. maybe it's just the Scottish. Uh, <laughs> one thing that we've picked up is that you know that, uh, filmmakers don't really find yeah. that local authorities are, are all that helpful. Um, I, I mean, we, I mean, like I say, I mean, obviously, I have a lot of meetings with them and stuff, and we, I, I always want to meet with them way in advance to say, look, this is what we're doing now these are the dates we're filming on, is there anything that you want us to not do, and stuff like that. Um, but like I said, you know, the council have been great with us. Um, you know, we, we don't ask for anything financially often, we just get on with it, really. Yeah. Um, and and they are more than willing to support us. I mean, we were filming in the um, one of the town halls a few weeks ago, the double from the police station. They were, you know, very happy to let us do it. They were supporting us if we needed anything. Which was great for us, really, because you know we've got no money. <laughs> so, <laughs> so to to get any kind of support and help, and and one of the um, local um, drama um, centres, which is the Grange Playhouse down the road, some of those guys we work with on Screaming Deaf, and they, you know, we, we've got this really good relationship with them, and we can use costumes. They come and work as um, on as extras and stuff on the set. Some of them have got speaking lines, which is great. We always encourage that. Because it's just a bit of give and take, really, and, and they support us, we support them as much as we possibly can as well. So it's this kind of really nice community spirit that's going on, um, and everybody just wants to make the project as great as it can be, and and that's wonderful, really. It's such a nice kind of um, supportive environment. That's good. That's how it should be, really. I honestly have to say that that's cheered me up a little bit, because like like we say, some of the, some of the people we've been speaking to recently is like, they're, they're going to the local authorities, they're going to like the National Trust and, and all this kind of thing, and they just seem to have brick walls getting put in front of them, and it's, yeah. it's nice to hear that 
people are having a good experience. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I mean, we've applied for funding in the past, and like I said, there's so much red tape to go through. Yeah. It. And it just, you just, I mean, you can, we get application form, and it's like 20 pages long, and you just look at it, you go, well, I could spend the next three days on this application form, <laughs> just nothing might come of it ever, so, you know, why don't we just try and do it ourselves, really, and do it as best we can with the resources we've got, and, um, you know, because if you, you spend the rest of your life waiting for funding. Mm, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and nothing could ever come for you, be 90, and certainly just with you walking stick, going, well, I wish I'd made that film now. Uh, <laughs> so, so... Our, our motto is just go for it, really. Definitely, and, uh, definitely. You can. So, when uh, could the good listeners uh, and anyone else out there be able to see Sustain? When, when, are you, when are you thinking that you might have a release for this movie of yours? Um, well, we, we, um, we're hoping at the end of this year. Um, mm. Obviously, we've, um, we all have jobs on top of this, really. Mm. Um, so, and Joshua really is a, a budding student, so he's always busy, ain't you? Yeah, with your students studies everything. So, yeah. so we just we we do say the end of this year, but if it's early next year, then so be. We just we we won't release it until it's the after the best it can be. Um, you know, because everybody's worked so hard on it, and everybody, you know, and it's, it's a testament to their abilities that we just want it to be as great as it can. Um, mm-hmm. So, hopefully, the end of this year, if not early two thousand eighteen. And awesome. where could people who are listening to the episode? Go to find information about Sustain. I know it's mostly the the Facebooks and the Twitters and all that, but what pages do they need to go to to find out more? Um, well, like I said, you go to facebook.com forward slash Sustain Movie. We post everything there. Um, we've been posting loads recently because obviously we've been on set and production and so yeah. forth. So everything, as soon as we kind of know stuff, we put it on there pretty much. Um, there is the website that you can access through Facebook as well. But like I say, social media is just the big the big thing at the moment. That's where all your messages get through straight away. So just keep watching the page, really. We have we have said that we're going to try and get a first teaser trailer out by um, April. So because what we're trying to do is if we're, we're trying to get Screaming Death out maybe around Easter. So the hope is when we do the screening of that, if we've got time, we might put the trailer on before it for sustain and then release it at the same time on the internet so people can see it and see what we've been up to for the last few weeks. And basically just to show how awesome these guys are in the film and then everybody who's been in the film, just how brilliant they are because there are some fantastic performances and I'm completely in debt to them all. <laughs> <laughs> they, they just are amazing. I'm not, under, you know, that's no understatement. They are just amazing. I have to admit, when I first saw the trailer... Yeah, you you saw them oh, trailer straight. Away. Hell yes, I was. You, you can just message me straight away. Check this trailer. Out, check this trailer. Out. I was like, okay, I'll get to it. And he's like, no, do it now. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. No, well, not normally. Normally, you know, we we speak to each other and say, oh, well, will we approach these guys for an interview, or you know, will, will we will we get in touch with these guys? But no, as soon as I saw the trailer, it was um, I shared it on Kev's Facebook page, <laughs> but I'd already messaged you, Dave, before I even did that. So. <laughs> Yeah, we were actually filming when you messaged us because the DOP is on our face page. You went, you guys have had a message. I was like, oh, have we? And he says, yeah, you've had a message. I was like, okay, I'll have a look at it in a bit. Though. And then obviously you guys were sending us messages. It was really nice and, and very kind of you to to want to want to have a chat to us. Really, the pleasure's all ours. Oh, definitely. <laughs> definitely. So, so, uh, so, Josh, you're you're studying drama at the moment, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So, so. Are your classmates are they are they jealous of, about the fact that you're actually filming <laughs> an actual movie? Uh, I think I, I would say yes. I would because I would. Only, I would be. Only a couple of people have asked me about the film and asked what it's about, but everyone else just seems not really to ask me any questions. I would think that everyone would want to know, but just I think just jealousy. Yeah, yeah. Haters yeah. gonna hate you know. <laughs> just to do an Aaron Cartman thing in the in the in the middle of the class. Who wants to fucking touch me? <laughs> um, so, well, well, speak about speak about that for a second. So, I mean, what what kind of what actors influenced you then, Josh, into wanting to get into acting? Uh, well, I would say um, John Travolta. Uh, John Travolta. Yeah. Because right. I used to, uh, the first time I watched Greece, I was like, I would say five. I remember, I remember jumping up and down on sofas, singing to the songs and <laughs> um, pretending to be John Travolta. I remember um, dressing up as um, uh, 
the name? Uh, from Mrs. Doubtfire, Mrs. Doubtfire. Mr. from Mrs. Doubtfire and <laughs> imitating her to my mom and dad. Like, just remember that. So I would say um, uh, John Travolta. And as a growing up, I would say Leonardo, Di- Leonardo DiCaprio. Fair enough, fair enough. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I'm and just saying that the differences in our childhood. You grew up watching Greece, and I was watching Halloween when yeah. I was six. <laughs> You're watching Greece, and there's me watching Halloween. Yeah, oh we, God, no. we, we were watching proper movies, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just me life's how, how how my life's turned out. <laughs> so, so Joshua, when you when you look to roles coming up that you might try and go for, or films that you want to try and do, and and sort of you know different types of role you want to play what are you kind of gearing up for is, is there anything that takes your fancy or are you just going to have, uh, a, have a crack at anything I would say I'd rather go for the main character I think I've always played the good guy or the hero mm. where I've been acting all the time all the time I've, ha- I've hardly ever played the bad guy that like, I want to play the bad guy I think as a grower I want to play evil characters evil yeah. characters yeah, people like, do say they're better they're better to play I like that yeah so I've just always played the good guy. Was always played the hero all the time. And, and I, let's be honest: wait, when you are British, there's always a job in a James Bond movie. So, <laughs> yeah. well, exactly. Yeah. You know, you... I, I, I wouldn't mind playing James Bond either. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's that's one to aspire to, definitely. <laughs> See, with James Bond, yeah, yeah, you do all them stunts in a way, don't you? You could pull it off quite easily. Yeah, yeah. So you do your own stunts as well. Yeah. Was it just yeah. ro- it wasn't just rolling around on the grass though? Was it? No, I was actually getting out because <laughs> I do stunts all the time. It's literally rolling around on the grass though. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys are all padded up, weren't you? And Matt, yeah. who, Matt Kinson, who plays Roy McKenzie, is actually a stunt guy as well. So nice. they they were obviously Matt so then would check for safety and, and all kinds of stuff. And you were padded out. Like, yeah. like, we called you Batman, didn't we? Basically, because yeah. you had this massive <laughs> gear on, and we brought you a Batman mask in yeah. as well. Yeah. <laughs> just to put it on um, and so I mean obviously that stuff is pretty resistant and everything so all the, all the stuff that the guys were doing to you you were just like I can't feel anything yeah <laughs> so, wow so what you were wearing the pad and the, they were proper going for it were, were they or yeah I had the pad on the clothes and they were proper going for it but wow yeah I don't think I would have the balls to do that to be honest with you <laughs> especially in all this stuff so. <laughs> I, I would be if I was doing the kicking <laughs> oh, not you, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm all about that. <laughs> I'm a definite, I'm a definite evil character. Yeah, so. no, you are. Yeah. <laughs> I said we'd like something evil for you, wouldn't we? Yeah. Something before you go to uni and stuff. I did yeah. say I'd like something kind of evil and just do it as a little show, a little piece for you. So you've got your chance to like, just a chance to be evil. Yeah. Well, I so, like it. No, that evil. Too. That could be sustained too. If you come back from the dead, you could just be evil, couldn't you? Really? Like, yeah. <laughs> well, you do like a bit of horror, Dave. So. <laughs> yeah, right, it writes itself, really. <laughs> Sustainable, that would be the suit. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> 365 exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Dave, you've got your own production company as well. Yeah. So yeah. it's uh, uh, Light Bean Productions, is that right? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, and, and it's so it's celebrating its 10th anniversary this year, yeah? You know, you're the first one. You actually reminded me of that today. I actually really? was completely oblivious <laughs> to that. I was just... Completely oblivious. I went, oh, God, yeah, it's 10 years. That makes me feel old. Um, <laughs> You're welcome. So, yeah, it's been, no, it's fine. fine. <laughs> have, have it from the kids who I teach all the while. So, um, but yeah, it's 10 years, yeah, which is quite um, quite amazing, really, thinking back of it and all the stuff we've done. Um, so, yeah, it was, it's, it's great. And, I mean, it's the, the reason it's called Light Bean Productions is one of my um, favourite films is um, a film called K-Pax with Kevin Spacey. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. Awesome movie. Yeah, it's one. Of, I mean, I haven't got a favourite film, but it's one of my favourites. Um, and obviously, with with his character, space his character, in that he's supposed to be an alien. He travels on beams of light, so that's why I call it Light Beam, um, as a little nod to to that film. Mm. So it has little nods to it. All, most of the stuff I do have nods to something. <laughs> um, so I thought, well, if I start with the title of the company, then. <laughs> to, it's a That's slow. Good. Right, yeah, we, we like dialogue and we like, mm. you know, sort of fan nods as well. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's all good. That's all good. So, how did the how did the setting up of Light Beam Productions come about then? Um, I just finished uni really, um, 
And um, I, I've, I've always wanted to make films. I've been making films since as, much, since as long as I can remember, really. So I just thought, well, I need to put a name to something. And like I said, that was one of my favourite films and stuff. So I thought, well, that's like a personal connection to it. And it just grew from there, really. We just started making films. And every time we've made a film, we've just upped the stakes a little bit and done something new and different and more ambitious and... And then it's just kind of led to where we are today, really. We feature films and we still do short films, don't get me wrong and stuff. It's, it's great doing short films. Um, but feature films are um, are a joy to do, even though they are stressful at times, especially when you've got <laughs> no but, but, um, but, it's, um, but yeah, it's just kind of grown from there, really. Just the love of filmmaking. So one of the other movies that you've released under the, the Light Beam uh, Productions is The House of the Screaming Death. Yeah, I will be honest. I haven't done as much homework as Chris has done, but he assures me that the premise sounds great. So, can you do me a favor and, and just sell this movie to me? Tell, give, give me the elevator pitch for House of the Screaming Death. Okay. Um, well, obviously, if you're a big fan of Hammer and Amicus films and yeah. stuff, and the 60s, they used to do the anthology films, which you had somebody saying these are the stories, and you had all these stories, and there was some kind of evil twist at the end of the films. Mm-hmm. So, growing up on all those, me and Cushy and Troy and everybody and Becky and stuff, we've all worked together on films before, just went, shall we have a go at one? And we was like, yeah, of course, why not? We're all mad enough to try it and stuff. So, um, so that's where it began, really. And The House of Screaming Death is this anthology film in the same vein as Hammer and Amicus and stuff. And it's about this mysterious character called The Architect, who's played by the uh, wonderful Ian McNeese. And Ooh. he's got four stories to tell. So he tells the stories, and we've got a ghost story first, which is called The Lady in Grey. The second story is about witches and necromancers, and and that's fantastic as well. Um, The third one is called The Vampire, which is about, obviously, a vampire. Um, Not (laughs) these... Not these pretty boy Twilight ones, though. Oh, no, 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 never that, never that. They're my my favourite ones. That's for our two kind of vampire that took six hours to put makeup on. Yeah. It was insane, and Matt played the vampire in that as well. Um, and then the last one is a very kind. It's called Diabolique, and it's about demonic forces in the house and so forth. And then obviously we come back to Ian at the end of it, and he's got his own little story to tell as well. So that's it, really. And and it's it's it was a fantastic project to do. And, and like I say, it's still in post production. I kind of forget where I am sometimes because obviously since Christmas we've been filming Sustain, and then because the score's been done, I'll have that sent to me at two o'clock in the morning. So I have to take the director's hat off and put the producer's <laughs> hat on, like, <laughs> listening to and. Right. Okay. This is okay. This is screaming death stuff, and and so it's it's you know just juggling these two massive projects together really. But they it, it's so much fun to do, and there's such a big cast in it, and we all you know had so much fun, and we we, we actually filmed in um, a real 13th century um, house called the Manor the Manor House in, in West Bromwich, which is down the road. Nice. Yeah. Like, cool. Actually, actually is haunted. I'm not joking, like we had so many problems on set with sound and people seeing stuff and we've had we've got voices on audio and stuff that we can't explain. Um, <laughs> it was I mean we were there like till four o'clock in the morning some nights and it was just it was sinister <laughs> pretty much. Awesome. But it, you know, hopefully I mean, we said to him you know, we said to the ghost, look if you want to be in the film, you can do us a favour because that'll knock our budget up. <laughs> you know, but whether they're in the film, I don't know yet. <laughs> yeah, you might so, have, you might have one of those. Uh, what was it? Three men and a little baby. You might have one of those scenes where the little boy is hiding behind the curtain. Yeah, what a cardboard yeah. cow. Oh, shut up. I haven't. I haven't. Well, yeah, I haven't seen anything <laughs> in the background yet in the rushes and the lockup we've got. But if, if anybody sees anything, they can point it out, and we'll just say, yeah, that was meant to be there. But Ian McNeese. I mean, yes. you, you could have just said Ian McNeese is in it, and that would have sold me. So. <laughs> We 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 recently had a chance to to interview Ian uh, at one of the the local comic cons. Uh, I mean that guy is just a character. Yes, Ab- absolutely true. loved speaking to him. What what was it like working with Ian McNeese? Well, I mean, uh, he's very um, he's, he's absolutely hilarious in uh, <laughs> you know, conversation with him. Um, and it was at the Warsaw Comic Con about a year and a half ago. And what, what happened was we just finished filming, and we were going back in February to finish the last bits of filming we need to do, and obviously to film. The architect stuff. Um, it was in two blocks, and we approached him the day that we released the first trailer for Screaming Death. He was at Comic Con, and we just went up to him and crushed it, and went. So we've got this film, and he kind of looked at us and we went, "Here's the trailer. Would you be interested in being in it?" And so <laughs> I kind of looked at us, and he's called us these two weirdos ever since we approached him. <laughs> 
Um, and he looked at the trailer and he was very impressed with the trailer and he went, you know, have you guys done this? And we said, yeah, we've done it. And he says, this is really impressive. Um, let's talk, basically. And, and obviously we, we had a meeting with him in the January. Um, we filmed in the February and he was an absolute joy and he was an absolute professional. He loves Midlands chips. <laughs> I start. He loves chips from down here. He, he's, every time I see him now, I have to bring him a bag of chips, basically. <laughs> just to, he loves them and stuff. And, and he's just an absolute joy and he's very supportive. And he, um, you know, I spoke to him over Christmas and stuff. He's just an absolute joy. And we were so kind of happy that we had him on set and that he trusted us to, you know, us like budding filmmakers. And um, yeah, he was just a joy. He's a great guy. He really is. Yes. Yeah, it was it was amazing getting to meet him and interview him. Did he tell you about Karen Gillan's legs? <laughs> he hasn't told me that. No. One yet. Be on the next <laughs> one he told us about. on the interview about just not a story <laughs> per se, just Karen Gillan's legs. Yeah, there was no context. It was just no. <laughs> just halfway I'll through. Ask I'll, ask, I'll 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 message him in a minute and say so. Karen Gillan's legs. <laughs> L- literally halfway through the conversation, I think he just yeah, Karen Gillan's legs. <laughs> yeah, it was like where did that come from? <laughs> No, he was cool. And, uh, we're really excited about showing the film and for him to see it as well. I mean, like I say, we're hoping it's going to be out. We're going to be open to do a cast and crew premiere by Easter. Um, and, and he wants to come into the premiere, obviously, which is great. And he's, he's so supportive of it. Um, so we're really hoping that he likes what he says. We have released a clip of him already in the film. We released it last Halloween. We did an interview with him while we were on set and we released that last Halloween. So there is a clip out there of him in the film. <laughs> if people see it, uh, if you go to um, www.screamingdeath.co.uk, you'll find everything there. There's prequels to all the stories that are in the film. There's trailers out. He's you can find everything there. I'm gonna have a look for that definitely. <laughs> it sounds great. It really does. I was reading. I was reading on uh, about it on the 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 website earlier on, and I thought, oh, that sounds amazing. <laughs> so <laughs> here's a question for you guys then. So, yeah. what do you think then? Because obviously, Dave, you're a massive, massive horror head. So, what yeah. do you guys think makes a good horror scene or a good horror movie? What about the movie makes it great? What do you think, Josh? Uh, loads of jumps, I would say. Jump scares. Yeah, but I don't really find horror scary. Oh, I was, was going to say, this, this kid likes Grease. <laughs> <laughs> do you actually, do you like Grease too? No, I don't That's know. horrifying. Yeah. That <laughs> horrifying. Um, I think with with horror films, I I obviously growing up watching Halloween's and all kinds of stuff. I have like I said, it's always a guilty pleasure for me. But I've always said with horror, I I, I love horror that plays around with with your head and kind of primal fears. Um, one of the things that always freaks me out with horror films is if, it, is if a villain looks at you directly yeah. in a film. Mm. Yeah, that just can freak you the hell out, if, <laughs> you know. And it's, I've never really been scared by horror films. I think I just got immune to them from when I was watching stuff as a kid and, and everything. But, but there are stuff where they can kind of freak you out a little bit. And I think if it's if you're playing with primal stuff, I think if you make everyday life that seems so safe and comfortable, if you turn that on its head and play about with stuff like that, I think you can have a lot of fun with that in a horror film. Uh, <laughs> And, and that's what we tried to do with Screaming Death in a way, was you, you look at familiar stuff and you look at happy stories and you kind of turn them on the head. And mm. obviously, with all these old Hammer and Amicus films, there was always a sting in the tail, um, which is what we did as well. We were trying to make every story up this kind of really horrible sting in the tail at the end and how can we kind of do that with a modern audience and make it relevant. But yeah, I think it's, it's primal fears. I think if you play a bit with those and you subvert those in films. Yeah. And horror- Especially, you can have a lot of fun and you can mess about with audiences quite a lot. I mean, the the thing that stuck with me from the original Halloween movie, and it still does, it still <laughs> bloody well freaks me out, is not, none of the stabby scenes or anything like that. Mm-hmm. It's a scene where uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is in her bedroom, she looks out of her bedroom window and Michael Myers is standing in her goddamn garden. Yeah. <laughs> and that still freaks me out to this day. And you're talking... 20, 25 years ago that I first saw that movie and it still freaks me out. <laughs> yeah, so I know exactly what you mean there. Yeah, yeah, that's what I love about the, the first Halloween film is that he just kind of carpenter knew exactly what he was doing with the suburban setting and just, he, I think he always said, you know, if you if you set a haunted, if you set a horror film in a haunted house, 
you know what you're going to get. If you set it in a castle somewhere, like Dracula's castle, you know what you're going to get. But if you set it in everyday life, where you leave your doors open and, you know, this was like white picket fences, Twin Peaks, kind of David Lynch territory, if you turn that on its head and you, the home is invaded where you feel safe, that was that was what Halloween was great at doing. Mm. You just get, you just put Michael in your home, which you thought was safe, and that was that was all you needed to do, really. Yeah, yeah. So, Dave, you you have directed your own Friday the Thirteenth movie. Yes, yeah, a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> how, how cool is it to make a Jason movie? Like, what what's the? I mean, Friday the Thirteenth. That's got to be one of my favourite ones when it comes to the um, the slasher movies and whatnot. I, yeah. I do love a bit of Friday the Thirteenth, and I don't think they progressively got worse like most people seem to think. I do like some oh, of the later yeah. ones. I did like the 2009 one, only because it just seemed like a part 12 to me. It wasn't really a reboot. It was just like a part 12. Yep. So I could kind of accept it as a sequel and stuff. Well, um, I'm, sure if, I'm sure if Rob Zombie had made it, I would have hated it. it was, just on principle. <laughs> I, just, I can't stand what he did to Halloween 1 and 2. It was just awful. I refused to watch I, it. One time I absolutely got, refused to watch it. it. I, I, one time when he got removed from the cinema for shouting at the screen. I actually don't <laughs> You did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They just said, so you're going to have to stop shouting at the screen. I was thinking, yeah, but all these points are making it valid. <laughs> all these points are making it valid. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so what, what, what can you tell us about your Friday the 13th movie? Can you just give us a little little, um, little thing about that? Oh, well, um, it was it was one of those films where we just... I, mean, I have a lot of props and... I mean, I've got two mannequins upstairs. One of them is dressed as Michael and one of them is dressed as Jason. Um, which fixed the gas man out. I'll tell you that the start. It's great. It fixed the gas man out. I think we get an extra quid off the bill sometimes. Um, <laughs> but it's, uh, but um, I have all the props and stuff, and I just thought, hmm, well, we could make something. Um, and we just kind of went from there, really. And I wrote this script and like how I would do a Friday the 13th film, which is um, what's in the film, really. And we just, one of my, my old school friends, Mark, by the way, who's, who's a fantastic guy and so tall. Um, and I said to him, I said, is it fancy playing Jason? He went, yeah, sure, let's go for it. And, <laughs> and that was it, really. And we just, we auditioned people, and there were so many amazing people who came on board with that and, and who I still speak to today. And, and we have a lot of response on YouTube for it, because it's on YouTube now, and it's over one million hits, which is... Wow. It's amazing to think that, you know, I mean, we just made this little film for the fun of it, and we have so many kind of positive responses to it, and people saying this is better than some of the later films. I'm like, oh, okay. That's great. That's lovely to hear and stuff. And um, yeah, it was a lot of fun, really. We just we went down to the woods and <laughs> filmed people dying and stuff. And then found out a week afterwards when we finished filming that there was actually reports of Satanists down there at the same time. <laughs> well, that was quite fun. I'm sure if they'd seen Jason running around, they probably would have run off, to be fair. But <laughs> that was quite interesting to find out that they were there at the same time as you. Um, I mean, we were down there till like four in the morning some nights filming death scenes and everything. Stuff, so they must have, <laughs> they must have just backed off and gone on with their stuff while we got on with ours. <laughs> maybe, maybe he went, oh no, fuck that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're off. So it was, it was yeah. a lot of fun, and and like I say, Laura Evanson is in sustain. I actually met her on Friday the Thirteenth, and we've worked on so many stuff since. Um, so again, you know, you work on these films and you you get to know people and, and actors, and, and they become your friends and really close friends and. You just work with them again because they're a joy to work with. Yeah, I noticed that when I was looking through the IMDb that you tend to work with a lot of the same actors in the you know different different projects and what have you. That's 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 a good thing. That it really is definitely yeah. Yeah, well, they're just fantastic at what they do. That's yeah, why, yeah. You know, you, you, as a writer, you can write certain roles for people, knowing full well that that's exactly who you want and because you're your one you write it specifically for them and there's quite a few people in this film to say that we wrote stuff for because we knew they'd do it we knew they'd be the best people for it and obviously you, you have an expectation in your head of how brilliant they're going to be and they just go above and beyond that like Josh here ain't you it's just <laughs> awesome it's absolutely awesome what he does so Josh so, has got future roles with you then yeah <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. But he's, he's, like I said, he, I mean, he wants to he wants to try and be a bad guy, so I said I might write him something to do as a bit of a showreel footage, um, just so he can have his bad guy moment. So well, you've got to have your bad guy moment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Get another get another um, you know, 
horror franchise gone and let Josh be the villain. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. definitely. I think he could pull it off quite easily. Yeah. Her. Well, we, I can't wait to see the finished project of the of Sustain. It's, it's, it's really is looking like it's going to be great. Really yeah, can't one, wait. It has got you excited, this one, hasn't it? It has. Yeah. It has, yeah. It's nice to see you excited about these things. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So uh, we'll just we'll, we'll wrap this up here in a minute, then, guys. Just uh, take one one more chance and uh, just pimp yourselves out, pimp out sustain. Uh, let again, let everybody know where they can see it, where when they can look forward to it. Um, so, like I said, if you if you want to go on Facebook, if you're a Facebook person, just go on to facebook.com forward slash sustain movie. Um, there's links to the Twitter there. If you prefer Twitter, there's an Instagram account. If you prefer that, uh, the website is on there as well. Um, if you go to www.screamingdeaf.co.uk, you can find all the stuff about House Screaming Death. Um, hopefully, sustain. Like I said, it'll be out later this year, uh, if not early 2018. Um, but we will be releasing a trailer around Easter time for it, so you will get your first look at um, at many Spielberg shots that we've been doing. <laughs> uh, you have somebody very up front, and then you have people in the background and stuff. We've been doing that a lot. Um, so yes, you'll get your first look at it hopefully around Easter time. Awesome. Um, and that's, there's loads of mini sodes still that people can watch with the characters, like Josh Ely is in one of them as well, and it gives you a bit of a backstory to some of them before you see the film um, that we wanted to do just to get get people used to the characters. So there's lots of content out there. There's um, interviews with Troy and Kieran, who are the producers, some of the other cast members. There's there's loads of stuff out there you can find, uh, and we'll be releasing loads more in the next few weeks as well. Good stuff. And you've also got the YouTube channel as well, haven't you? Um, yes, uh, you just type like Bean Productions in, and it's all on there as well. You'll find me somewhere. <laughs> it's easy to find. It is easy to find. I found it earlier on today. So subscribe oh, to it. So. Yeah. <laughs> just to reassure you, <laughs> there is there is one last thing that isn't on your on your question sheet that we like to do on the indie talk episodes that we do. We are okay. com- we're compiling a list called the 365 picks that we put on the website and we have in the episodes where we're asking our guests anybody who comes on the show to give us a movie that we feel some that people should watch before they die not that they have to watch but that they should watch (laughs) and tonight we're lucky because we have two guests so can we get a movie from each of you and i'm going to veto grease straight away (laughs) (laughs) okay what's yours then josh uh you got that well, I was going to say Grease too, but no, I won't. <laughs> um, uh, oh, God, this k I'll just say k because I mentioned it earlier, yeah. and it's a beautifully shot film, and there's a lovely story to it, and visually, it's amazing. So that's why. Excellent. What's yours? Good stuff. Being put on the spot. <laughs> that's why we do it. <laughs> <laughs> many movies. Um... Like I say, it doesn't, oh, yeah. it doesn't just, just watch your favorite me. Yeah, when I thought when I was sending you the questions earlier on, I thought oh, I'm not sending them that. <laughs> That's just cheap. Uh, you devil. You're a devil. <laughs> uh, I'll just say um, Blood Diamond. Blood Diamond, uh, good oh, choice. Oh, damn, damn good damn choice. Damn yeah. choice. Yeah, yeah. Good choice. Excellent. And Brilliant. because you've chosen that, because you've chosen Blood Diamond, you now have to do your best Leo South African accent. Oh, there you go. Uh, that's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what, Josh? He, he, he tries to get me to do accents all the time, and every single time I screw it up. So, <laughs> don't, yeah, don't do it. Don't let him do it to you. <laughs> but, uh, guys, this has been an absolute pleasure. Uh, thank you very much yeah, for, for uh, taking the time tonight. Josh, you've, you've broken your podcast. Don't say that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say it. Uh, but uh, best luck with filming the rest of the movie, guys. And uh, Josh, best luck with the the drama course. And uh, you know, if you ever want to come on three six five again to have a bit of chat when the the movie's ready to to come out, we are more than happy to have you yeah, on. Definitely, definitely. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. That'd be great. Thank you very much. Good no stuff. At all. Thank. Thank you. Crisis for the Geek Kai. Top geek officials admit they underestimated the hipster's defense capability. Join the geek revolution and save the galaxy. Geeks from all over the globe are joining up to fight for the future. They're doing their part. Are you? Want to know more? Join We Be Geeks and the Geek Revolution and save the world. Service guarantees citizenship. Listen to Weeby Geeks podcast on iTunes and Stitcher or online at WeebyGeeks.net. 
We Be Geeks, your voice for the geek revolution. Want to know more? Bom, bom, bom. So, Scarlett, how good was that interview? Did you like that interview? No. Oh, man. What do you mean, no? That, Can't say no. That was silly. The man might be listening to this and now he's heard you say, no, that's not a good interview. He's not going to be happy with that, is he? Well, it is a good interview. Do you think when we're in Wales we should Skype you? But not when I... Oh, well, you'll not be able to speak to us then. I'll Skype Ruby. Yeah, and make me come on. And say, can Scarlett come on? I will. So this episode went off the rails. That's fine. This was a bad idea. That's fine. This, uh, sh- this probably won't be happening again. To be fair, the was it New Year? Yeah. That one was more derailing. It was derailing, but it was great. It was great <laughs> derailing. To the fact that I even pulled that together was was unbelievable so we we are going to head off that was a fantastic interview join us again for the next indie talk which will be in two weeks time we don't actually know what's coming but it There's will a couple in the pipeline. it will be yeah, great uh, it will be it will be awesome and fantastic and stuff and things so would you like to say goodbye scarlet goodbye and i promise that's the last time you'll ever hear from her chris would you like to say goodbye goodbye dad